So we'll go on to the next talk. Um, well, I'm not going to talk too long. I'm going to let him do the talking. He's going to tell us about how to do things with Qt Creator that we normally don't do. Okay. Yes, hello. Um, yes, I'm into uh, embedded development for quite some time, and I've well, I've been using Qt Creator for quite quite a while. Um, for Linux development, which is quite nice and has quite nice for remote embedded Linux deployment, works quite good. And then we had some of these boards lying around. I got these at, uh, at a fair, and it's pretty cheap. I think it's about 50 bucks, uh, 15 bucks um, euros in this case, and uh, it has a an, an debugger chip, which is connected directly, and uh, you can start right on with this uh, solution I'm going to present. So, what I'm going to talk about is um, I'm using OpenOCD, Qt Creator, Cubes, and Cubes Project Manager, which are plugins to the Qt Creator, and the bare metal plugin, which is also a plugin to the Qt Creator. And just to know how much in detail I have to go through this stuff. So who's who's not, who's used or knows OpenOCD? You guys. Okay, it's and Qt Creator. Okay. It's, okay. And has anybody used Cubes Cubes Project Manager bare metal plugin? Great. <laughs> okay. Um, so, um, so what's Qt Creator about? I just do a little bit for all these who don't know Qt Creator. Um, well, it's a multi-platform IDE, and uh, that was the requirement I had for for choosing a desktop uh, and development uh, environment. And key requirements were code completion nice refactoring solution and debugging working. And one thing which I personally really like oh, it's just, uh, um, is to have a full open source development stack for political and technical reasons. So um, I'm just going to talk about open OCD. It's a um, versatile hardware debugger. It has multiple backends, and I think it's called transports. And these backends, so you have, I think it's an ST link on this board, or there's for the uh, J link, there are drivers, or drivers for, uh, well, the bus pirate, and, and re really different stuff. Um, so uh, if you have, happen to do some FPGA development, you probably have these Altera bus blaster lying around. There are also backends for this open OCD hardware. Um, it's pretty slow, by the way, but it works. So you can get, if you have some, some hardware laying around, chances are pretty high, JTAG hardware, that you can do hardware debugging uh, with open OCD. Um, open OCD front end is in GDB server, so that's the way the Qt Creator is talking to it. Uh, the community is very friendly of it, and it's scriptable. So um, you normally have some have to do some board specific stuff like how am I doing the resets, uh, the reset, and stuff like that. And so you can script it, or you can script your own reset handlers if you, your hardware needs special handling, so you need to uh, make sure that it's coming up clean. Uh, this can be done via, via Tickle scripting. And you can also use um, OpenOCD for in-system programming, but uh, that's, I'm not touching it any further, it's just for completeness. Yes, and um, well, this GDB server, as the back end for debugging. And the IDE is the Qt Creator I'm talking about. 
And Qt Creator internally has a nice modular design. It's based on plugins. And uh, so it's easy to extend. It also has some other uh, development stuff. Um, other development stuff like Android development, which is pretty new, I think, and embedded Linux. And of course, you can do desktop Qt uh, development, what it's originally sort of for. Um, and it has support for different build systems. So um, while I'm only focused on the GCC um, build environment or um, it also has support for, for other compilers for different platforms. But, um, oh, I, I just switched compilers and build systems, sorry. Um, it also has support for different build systems, um, like uh, Cube Make, uh, Cubes, uh, CMake, Make. I don't know. That's probably about it. Um, and it has backends for different debuggers. And it has a nice abstraction of devices so you can configure your own devices, which I'm only also using, uh, which is presented later on. And all this stuff up here is combined via kits. Uh, so you can just have different cross compilers configured in your Qt Creator. So if you have different hardware boards lying around, and one is, for example, an ARM um, V7A, the other one is in PowerPC, you can just have different tool chains configured as, a, as in one kit. And uh, so you can easily switch and compile for different kits. It's quite nice. Um, yeah. So if you have any questions, just pop up uh, normally in the end, the question gets easily lost. So if you have any, if anything is unclear, just ask. Um, OK, one of the build systems Qt Creator supports is a Qt build system. Is it right? Is it Qt's build system? I guess. Um, was not sure about the Qt part. Um, it's a JavaScript-based build system. And it's using the QML runtime environment. And it's quite neat because it's this JavaScript can be passed, well, quite easily because it's JavaScript and it's mainly a, a JSON description, kind of JSON description. And of your stuff, I am going to show it later on in the live presentation. It's pretty compact, so I've done different, uh, I've built different um, um, projects and, well, you need about one screen of text to describe your build normally, which is quite neat for an embedded cross-build. You normally need much more. So, for example, CMake, I think, it's quite double of the size for describing the same stuff. Um, yeah, it has lots of intelligence kind of built in, into it. Um, so it just knows by the file ending what to do and does it automatically and you don't have to care much about it. And um, it's integrated into the Qt Creator with the, via the Cubes Project Manager. This stuff is, I would say, pretty pretty new. I think it's a 3.0 release, which is the newest release, uh, where this was, I think, the first time it was released. Yeah, and it's still um, marked as experimental. So you have to explicitly um, activate it, but I'm showing it later on. And yeah, uh, one thing. What was missing to Qt Creator was the bare metal stuff. So it has nearly had nearly everything in place. So the compiler support, debugger support, nice code completion, and well, um, but one thing that was missing was that it was not able to directly talk to the GDB server. 
um, to a hardware GDB server, which has some subtle differences in the way it has to be talked to. And that's why I wrote the bare metal plugin for Qt Creator. It essentially, um, if you enable the bare metal plugin, you have two, um, uh, two things you see. For one thing is you, you get a bare metal device. That's where you define uh, your hardware debugger. And you get a bare metal kit that's uh, the associated kit where you can just define your compiler and stuff like that as it's normally defined in Qt Creator. Um, bare metal itself is pretty basic right now. So mainly you can just uh, select the network port and the IP address um, where the GDB server is listening, so you don't have to have it on the same host. You can just have it over network anywhere running. Um, and it has a window where you can type in your GDB commands, which is pretty basic, but very versatile because you can, well, I, every hardware debugger I used beside OpenOCD, uh, which are commercial ones, uh, is also able to be used with this spare metal plugin. Um, yeah. Okay. And now I'm going to switch to the live presentation. Where is it? Oh. Oops. So I'm going to start. Um, so I'm just going to show you the, the settings. So um, for example, oh, down here, you have a bare metal device configured, probably bare metal device. It's an ST link V2. And down here, um, you can configure the, the port for the, um, where the debugger is running. Currently, hopefully, I have the um, a debugger running, which is also not started automatically. So you have to make sure if you're using it that the debugger is running somewhere. But normally, you just have to start it once your hardware is connected, and then you can just use it. So down here are the commands uh, for OpenOCD typical commands to get uh, the program loaded is to reset the device, load up uh, the binary into the hardware, and just do a reset again to make sure that, uh, well, it's, it's in a proper state uh, after loading. Normally it's not needed, but uh, well, and uh, then you, that's all you need for, for getting the device programmed and up and running on this side. And then um, you have uh, these kits. For example, I have a uh, bare metal device over here. And here I'm using, oh, it's not updated. Yes, I'm using a bare metal device. I'm just saying, okay, um, it's the ST-Link uh, debugger, which is placed on here, and I'm talking to over OCD. I'm using an ARM compiler. Oops, Raspberry, that's the wrong one. And I don't need any Qt in this case, which would be uh, a little bit too large for these kinds of devices. Okay, and you can configure the uh, compilers like this. It's I think it's pretty straightforward, and the debuggers are also uh, defined uh, straightforward. And okay, and this should be it. And then you can load a project. And I, uh, where is it? Oops, wrong. 
this. So, um, right here. Is it visible? Yeah, nearly. So this is a Cube's build system description. So it, um, um, I had to add to some support for assembly to the Cube's build system. So um, as it has, the main focus was building for desktop stuff. The support for building assembly files, files was, not, was not in cubes, so I added it to the cubes system. And that's one thing that's making me some problems right now, but <laughs> you'll see later. Um, yeah, and over here, well, you just say, give it the compiler flags, the linker flags, um, you include paths. I don't know if the dot is really needed right now, but well, it's there. And then you can use wildcards, for example, for your files, which is quite neat. So you don't have to enter all these files by hand. You can just say, OK, I'm having all the uh, .c files in this directory and want to have them included in my project. And then you see it over there. And um, you can also define some variables. For example, if you have an external path, you can just define uh, JavaScript variables and use them to construct your um, paths. If you have some complicated paths, it, is, it, it, make it makes it much easier to, to handle this stuff. So I think I'm, I'm currently working on a, a different project. It's a little bit more complicated than this simple one, and that's uh, and free Atos base project, which is, and over here you see the cubes files is not much larger than that. It's just pulling in some more includes, but due to the wildcards which can be used, it's still quite compact for for uh, the files which are pulled in. Um, Using wildcards is kind of a double-edged sword in this kind, because if you're using wildcards, Qt Creator can't manage these files by itself. So if, um, you just have to make sure that the wildcards are correct and the paths are correct. Um, if you're not using wildcards, Qt Creator can add this stuff into the files list for you and manage these files. But I don't think it's doing it if there are wildcards in there. Um, so, yeah. But I think it's it's easy enough so that you can just uh, describe your build pretty pretty easily and get something up and running uh, quite quick. Okay, and well, the feed air trust, I'd like to have it running, but unfortunately, I didn't had had enough time to get it up and running, and so I'm going to use the test project over here. Um, to start debugging, I can switch on the debugger. Oh. oh, okay, it's switched on. I'm just going to see if I'm having the hardware debugger running. Oh, no, it's not running. So I have to start open OCD in the background. Oops. <laughs> so, well. Okay, now he's, he's up and running. Mm. He doesn't like to be hibernated or something like that. Um, so, it's compiling. Oh, I, I guess I forgot to set a breakpoint. So it's, I, I would like to have a more complicated project up and running, um, but well, I went out of time, and I don't have this up and running. So you, you see, okay, you have your variables, you can set breakpoints, and well, it's if you're used to Qt Creator, you can just press the normal buttons after you configured it, and you're ready to go. And you have all this um, 
nice stuff Qt Creator gives you, like like code completion, um, code model stuff, which there has been a talk today from. Uh, you probably have seen it. Um, yes. Okay. Um, are there any questions? Something you want to see before I stop the live presentation and switch back to? Yeah. So the question is, if, is it possible to have a peripheral view? Right. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it would be possible. And I also talked with the Qt Creator guys how to, it might be possible to implement it. But Right now, it's not. It's on the wish list, and you will say, see it later on. Um, that's, I think, the <coughs> large thing missing from this solution for having a an, uh, product which is comparable to commercial IDEs. Yes. So, so uh, the comment was that it's quite would be quite neat to have a uh, device view somewhere within the Qt Creator, and yeah. But f unfortunately, it's not there. But it's on my wish list too. So, um, yeah, we'll see what the future brings. I don't know. I can do no promises, but well, I'll, I'll get some time to work on this stuff. Probably there will be something happening. So you can, can in Qt Creator you can just switch to assembly view, and then so I just switch of the debugger. So up here you see the debugger stuff. You normally want, don't want to see it. It's just for um, debugging the debugging session, <laughs> and normally you don't want to do that. <laughs> but well, and then you can step through the assembly. Memory map, I don't know. I well, one thing was the uh, stuff if uh, that you have in device maps. The memory can, map is an output of the compiler. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you can you can uh, give a you can create in cubes. You can create a, a um, compiler setting where you just say create me a map, and then it creates a file and you can just look at it. So well, you got it somehow. Well, that was the question before. But yeah, but not, not device specific, just a range, for example. Address oh, okay. X and C, uh, yes. Nice there. Um, yes, you have a, you have, you can look in, into memory via the debugger. So you can, um, uh, over here, for example, if you want to look at this stack stuff and so on. So. Uh, that's the debug functionality which is already there from, from the Qt creator in this case. So there's... Oh, okay. So if you have more questions, I'm sorry. I think I just got, uh, got the time out. So um, I just going to switch. How much time do I have left? Where's my, eh? Ah. So, okay, future improvements. Um, support for all build system, Qt Creator supports. So currently only QMake and Cubes is supported. And CMake and Make, I don't know, I haven't tested it. I haven't time to test it, but it would be nice to have it. Um, to have a variable support in the command window which is entered into the uh, device view for the bare metal. So you can, if you have some 
special commands where you need the binary, which some esoteric uh, hardware debuggers need that. Um, it would be nice to have. A fast restart button, so uh, on some devices downloading is quite slow, so it would be nice to have a restart button. And one question was over here, and that's also something which would be nice to have, was a, would be a memory device view um, by hardware description. Yeah, and other stuff um, you can do with Qt Creator, well, um, that's just some completely different, something completely different. Okay, thanks for listening.